All right, everybody, welcome to Dojo Talks. Today, we're talking about the chest boom. This is a kind of an inscrutable topic. I demanded we talk about it mostly in the hope that we get some answers. I have a couple thoughts, but we're going to toss this around a little bit. So here's the basic numbers. It's, it's astounding. I, when I actually read them off to you, it, I, I, it's hard for me to believe, but I have to believe it. So here we go. December 31st, not so long ago, right? Chess.com had 7 million active daily users. Okay. Oh, and and Jesse, one yeah. thing about that. Yeah. That was a record on that, December 31st. Right. Okay, that was a record. So it's not just like, right, we have to understand that's not starting from the bottom of a trough or a this or a that. That was the highest ever. Right. Then, so January 20th, 20 days later, they're at 10 million. So 7 million to 10 million. Then... By early February, they're at 12 million plus. And uh, it's totally astonishing. And the only other fact I want to add to that is just my anecdotal experience where, you know, uh, I know other parents. I know people from the gym, little parts of my life over here that have nothing to do with chess. People I've known here for a while. And these people are all coming to me and saying, yeah, I'm playing online. So <laughs> it's definitely happening, okay? And we, we want to talk today, like, especially why it's happening. We have some thoughts. Uh, and, like, what's going on? How is this going to change the chess world? All kinds of things. It's, it's actually, it's monumental when you consider the numbers. I mean, it's even, and, and here's, uh, let me just say the obvious thing. There's no clearly definable cause for this. It's not like the Fisher boom. For example, it's not like the Queen's Gambit boom. And and I think by the numbers, I think it's just essentially bigger than those booms too. So we're just going to talk yes. about that today. All right, what are you guys' thoughts, first of all? Yeah. So as far as what we're going to try and do with this show, let me just add, like, we're going to try to answer that question of why is it happening if we can. Mm -hmm. And then either... You know, at some point we'll have an answer or we won't have an answer. We may move on to some of those other questions Jesse suggested, like, you know, what's the effect going to be and how's it going to play out and stuff. But first, let's see if we can answer the why. I've done a little bit of research. Okay. I don't know about you, Kostya. Have you done anything? I've done some some mulling. Uh, you could okay. say I've done my own research. You know? <laughs> All right. So let's <laughs> let you go first, then, just in case I'm more informed. <laughs> yeah, sure. Um, well. So for me, I think, yeah, there's very clearly a, a chess boom. And it has been booming, in my opinion, for a few months. Um, to me, I don't know, the, the trajectory seemed to be pretty clear. And there feels to be like a perfect storm of a number of factors. Um, so number one, the previous chess boom before this was like definitely Queen's Gambit. There were things kind of bubbling up before Queen's Gambit happened. There was like pog champs. There was the pandemic. A lot of people were staying home. Um, and uh, getting into chess that way. And then Queen's Gambit was like this amazing show and it kind of like lit the whole match and everything um, blew up. And it's really amazing to me that since then, like chess.com has like doubled, almost like tripled their numbers from Queen's Gambit, which was already just like an insane boom as it is. Um, I definitely felt the boom starting during the Hans Niemann, Magnus Carlsen uh, drama that mm -hmm. I guess took place in September, 2022. Um, now the boom didn't actually happen in terms of numbers until like a couple months after that. But for me, that's definitely when it started because that was, first of all, that was the thing that people started asking me about, like normies, civilians. Yeah. Um, before that, you know, I would talk about people with like Queen's Gambit, you know, people really loved that show. They wanted to know like, oh, how close it is to the real chess world, all this stuff. Then when the Han stuff went down, I had so many people asking me like, oh, did he really cheat? Like what really happened? You know? Um, lots of people actually taking the anal beads theory, um, at like face value as like being like a real theory. So that just yeah. like gives you an idea of how, how, like how big that story got. Um, people are still asking me about that today. Like we're in March, 2023. I've had people ask me this week, like, so what happened with Hans? Did they ever figure out like if he cheated or what, what did people think? Um, right. so I definitely felt like there was a ton of interest that stemmed from that. Now, in terms of how it like spilled in one sec, let me, comes let me interject first. something yeah, with that ahead, for you, Kostya, for like historical, and then I'll let you keep going. But do you remember that there was a cheating scandal between Kramnik and Topolov in a world championship match? Yeah. 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 
which Toilet was Gate. called Toilet Gate, right? And that made the front page of the New York Times. So for context, like there's been a somewhat similar story to like, that's a comparable story, right? To Carlson versus Neiman. That story happened. It hit the front page of the New York Times. It didn't have any effect like this one is having right now, right? So that's just sort of like an interesting point counterpoint. Now, you know, keep going. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. Uh, no, no, it's fine. Um, my feeling for why like the Neiman story was so successful in terms of like drawing attention was that there was just no clear answer to it because there was this like chess cheating scandal. Then there was the poker cheating scandal in, like a month after, which was mm -hmm. also like uh, very high for engagement for the, the poker world. Again, like no clear answer there, like whether there was cheating or not. And then what really cinched it for me was there was this like pro bass fishing scandal, like two weeks after the <laughs> poker scandal, which was immediately cleared up because they just caught the guys like red handed. And so no yeah. one cared about that one because there was just such a clear answer. It's like, OK, they did cheat. So no, is there was no interest or intrigue in that story. Ah, the tribes um, can't keep warring when like there's just when there's just yeah, an there's answer. like an immediate yeah resolution. But I don't really know exactly like why the, there wasn't a similar effect with the with the toilet gate. But yeah, I, I don't know. I think it all kind of stemmed from that. I feel like a lot of people uh, got interest um, into chess because of that. And I think that's when it kind of started. Like, because I'm sure chess.com's numbers must have started growing at that point. Like people start signing up um, for their app. I had a friend, you know, I haven't talked to in years, reached out to me. He said like he, he's playing a match against someone in like two months and he wanted to know like how to, you know, how to like, you know, prep for it and like study up for it. So I feel like people started started playing. They like they downloaded the app. That's, I think, been like such a big difference over the last couple of years. It's like now you can just download the app and start playing chess. So you don't have to like go to a chess club. You don't have to like find the code. You can just literally just download the app like anything else. Start playing chess on your phone. I think that's how most people have been getting into it these days. Um, nowadays, we see all these people like playing on the plane. You know, they're taking out their phone and they're like playing chess. Um, they're at the airport. They're like waiting for something. And uh, I think that's how it started. And, you know, like one person gets in, they get their friend to play, they get their friend to play. I think it's a slow process, but I think that's exactly what's been building up these mm -hmm. last few months. It's like people have just been slowly getting into it. Like, yeah, someone plays, like your partner starts playing, then you play, you challenge them, you start challenging your friends and yeah, slowly people get into it. And of course, okay, it's been in the culture. There's, you know, there's like Messi Ronaldo thing. It's always like chess now that, you know, chess is like very hot since, since Queen's Gambit, you know, people are trying to, uh, to use it. Uh, chess cells, you know, but, uh, but yeah, that's, that's my take. I think it really started with the, the Hans thing and then it's been um, bubbling up since then. Right. But you feel like despite the sudden explosion in January, there were some like bubbles coming from a, a bunch of different directions and it is a multi-factor. Uh, yeah. And then the January thing, right. Again, it's like a, a new year's resolution thing. I feel like that adds to the storm as well. Uh -huh. People are like, oh, you know, it's like, yeah, beginning of the year, I should like pick up some chess again, start doing some puzzles. And yeah. Yeah. Here we are. Yeah. Interesting. Um, yeah, that, that might be close to some of it. You know, when I first read this blog from chess.com, why is chess growing so rapidly? I was like, dude, we have to talk about this topic on Dojo Talks because obviously even chess.com has no clue. No clue. <laughs> why there's like the chess boom, like they can measure it on their servers and they've got no clue. Cause I read their reasons. And I thought, like, I was laughing out loud at their reasons. <laughs> um, now, after doing some research, I'm, I'm, I'm less laughing out loud. But just for reference for folks here, I'm going to put the link um, in chat for anyone who didn't do their pre-reading or research. There's, there it is. And for those on the podcast, I will read these reasons. Okay. First one. The most popular social media post in 2022 featured Lionel Messi and Cristiano Ronaldo playing chess. Now, I know who Lionel Messi is. He's a soccer player. I don't know who the other guy is. And who cares? It's just a photo. I'm like, that is the stupidest. Like, I read that and I'm already like, the person who's writing this is a complete moron. But actually, I think it's me who's a moron. But yeah, with you, buddy. <laughs> it's you, Bose. The next one says, many celebrities are talking about their chess obsession. Yeah, the cheating true. controversy, I'm like, yes, but it was three months before. So, you know, I'm not sure. But they give the cheating controversy next. Then they say amazing creator, streamers, coaches, and chess community members making awesome content. That's always been the case. Mm. 
Chess boxing. Oh my God. What a disastrous and stupid event that was. <laughs> Chess.com's acquisition of the Play Magnus group has no effect. The both groups existed before, both groups existed after. Mm -hmm. Most people don't even, you know, didn't even know what happened. Nobody cares. Um, chessboard and well, that one was also laughed at by Gotham Chess. And I'll say more about that later. But he read that one, Acquisition to Play Magnus Group. He was just like, ridiculous. Um, chessboard gifts and games over the holidays. You have that every holidays. Yeah. Um, Chess.com being featured on the App Store. I don't know. The incredible chess played by the best players in the world in so many amazing events. That's just general, and it's also always there. And then Mittens. And again, I'm just like, oh, the stupid reasons. Like, mm -hmm. what is Mittens? It's just like... Is just play against the computer, but then they put a picture of a cat on your webpage? Oh, yeah. Minutes was very popular. That's true. Yeah, that was part of it, too. A no, lot like, of people downloaded the app because of Minutes. And now like, they have the app. Minutes? Now they're playing. Messi, Ronaldo. Like, I'm like, this is stupid. This is absolutely stupid. None of this has anything to do with chess, nor with why anyone would ever play chess. Like, to me, dumbest thing ever. But I was doing some research for today. So there are the reasons, folks. I was doing some research and I was reading some article about the growth and like the views on different channels on Twitch and stuff like that, which was posted by not like chess players. It was like, you know, just industry analysts kind of mm -hmm. stuff. Right. And they said there's this like great article by Gotham Chess about it. And I was like, OK, I'm going to click on this and watch my first Gotham Chess video. And a couple weeks ago, I was I was pondering this question uh, when I was talking with some chess players and I. Uh, this uh, this high school chess player told me her theory as to why chess has become big is that uh, is that Gotham Chess started posting chess videos on TikTok right before this boom. Mm. Yeah, I wanted to mention that. That's and also that, big. She was like, she was like, let me give you like one most likely reason. He yeah. started posting chess videos on TikTok. Mm -hmm. I'm like. Okay, so I'll go to his video to see if he, you know, if he's got his finger on it and he can explain what's going on. And uh, his video was very convincing, actually. Very good, um, I think. I guess I can drop a link to it here. Not that he needs his videos shared. Is this it? Yeah, this is it. Um, and he basically, uh, what I really noticed in his video was he said that his short videos on YouTube, or he, he showed his short videos on YouTube are getting twice as much um, action as his long videos. And even his long videos aren't very long, right? Like, yeah. you know, he's posting, you know, 15, 20 minute videos instead of the two hour videos that I would favor. Um, but the YouTube shorts are probably kind of like TikTok-y things, right? Like a minute or, or less, maybe. Mm -hmm. He says those are getting twice as many views. He showed the views that he's getting on TikTok and it was just millions upon millions, right? Um, Nicholas J. Sloan posted a short yesterday and got 2,000 views in 30 minutes. What's your following like, Nicholas? When we post an instructed video, <laughs> it, it could take us a week to get those 2,000 views. It's just not that, how it works, like David. Our lifetime total. That's not how it works, folks. <laughs> He's got a people want subs. the short form content. Yeah. yeah. I mean, we've been, we've been talking about this for a while, but yeah, me and Jesse, we're addicted to the shorts. You know, we can't stop. And then there's <laughs> another thing. And then he gave one more like piece of evidence and he showed um, the videos that chess base India posted from the world rapid and blitz. And it's a bunch of stuff like Magnus Carlsen, like walks over to his board and sits down, you know, or Magnus Carlsen raises an eyebrow when his opponent moves. Yeah. Or Nodibek Abdusadarov looks unflappable. And it's just like, yeah. Nodibek just sitting there, unflappable, like always, you know, nothing. Like, you know, 15, 20 second videos. And it's like 5 million, 7 million, 5 million, 10 million. Like, what? Yeah, Wesley So laughs. Some dude like adjusts a pawn. Like, the, I mean, I had no inclination to click on any of those, those videos, Kosia. No interest to me, but millions of people had. And so, um, well, David, that's the magic. You're, I think you still don't quite appreciate. They're not clicking on the videos. They're just swiping. They're just swiping through the content and the algorithms just feeding them chess videos. Like you watch one chess video. Right. Actually, I see it all the time. I was at a friend's place the other day and, uh, you know, they watch, uh, 
they're not chess players, but they watch Gotham Chess. Yeah. <laughs> That's the one chess mm-hmm. channel they watch. And if yeah. you look at their suggested videos, and this happens with like, I think anyone that just watches like a Gotham Chess video, it's like, all right, they'll get more Levy videos and then they might get like a Ben Feingold video or like a Botez video or a Hikaru video. And then that's just how it starts. And then if you take shorts into account, it's like, yeah, you just watch one short. And like once you just watch like more than, I don't know, 50% of a chess short, that's it. The algorithm is like, oh, you're into chess. All right, we're going to show you like mm-hmm. 100 more chess videos the next time you're you're on this app. And uh, and yeah, that's how it goes. Although to your point, you know, we've been posting some really straight up instructional shorts on YouTube, like mm-hmm. like videos that are worth ELO. And uh, and yeah, those don't exactly uh, crush. <laughs> those don't exactly <laughs> do super great. So yeah, to your point, you know, it's like the less meteor content uh, does seem to be um, rewarded a little bit, a little bit. The less little. what content? Like less, you know, oh, substantive. Less media. Okay, I see. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, so I found, uh, I found that reasoning from Gotham to be pretty, uh, convincing that, that basically the shorter, shorter form content is, has had like a huge role in this, right. Which actually gets to what, you know, Rochelle told me, which is, you know, maybe it is like Gotham going to TikTok that like added, you know, 5 million chess players to the thing. But from that data, I want to go even picture. Here's what I think it is. I think it's the algorithms. It's two or three algorithms that have decided to do this. In a sense, it's almost like it doesn't matter if it's Gotham Chess or Magnus Laughing or anything, right? Like what happened is, and there's probably some human input on the algorithm, right? But like at some point, the algorithm slash some somebody tinkering with the algorithm decided like if you make little short chess clips, it doesn't risk making anybody smarter, actually, contrary to the reputation of chess. If we can actually make money on stupid little videos that have chess in them, like chess can be Candy Crush. That's what somebody figured out. It can be, you know, tactical puzzles that take one second. It can be bullet games. It can be like some dude blundering made in one or flagging up a queen. It can be 30 second chunks at a time that don't actually make anybody think or put in any effort. And they can just like flip through it. Ding, 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 ding. And the algorithms have decided like we can have stupid chess now. And everybody says, yes. Yeah. Let me follow up on that a little bit. Because what I, one of the things that the only real plausible explanation I have is that um, so imagine first, first boom, uh, Fisher boom, right? And one of the things is obviously a compelling story and there's some weirdness to it. And so it's not just like some perfect dude. No, this is a weird dude. He's doing his own weird thing. People are drawn into that content and you have a great guy like Shelby Lyman doing some commentary that feels very human and, um, approachable. But then following the Fisher boom, here's something I experienced as a kid is that, all of the media around chess was lame and it like fed into the kind of geeky image that chess used to have. So if you guys don't know, like back in the day, there would be these chess life covers and the covers just looked like obscene. There would be like a picture of a gaunt, oily haired Karpov (laughs) smiling at you and you'd just be like, oh, is this really what I'm associated with? Is this my identity here? And so it was this really uh, bizarre thing back in the day where anything to do with chess in the media was controlled by just a couple of outlets and it was never sexy. It was never approachable. And Mm -hmm. it felt like, A, you either were like a nerd and definitely there was an incredible stigma around it. And then there was like, well, if you do it, you have to be super smart. There was that thing going on around it. Um, And it almost like it was, it's still incredibly dominant male, but now there's a couple more women in it, right? My my just gut feeling is we went from 3% women to 6% women, which is a huge 100% gain, (laughs) right? And I think it's a huge action. I think that's a key part of the image of chess. So my my big picture argument is it's kind of like with 
this new media where it's not chess life who's pushing chess. It's all of these other people and human stories that then allows chess to be what it really is. It's not some elitist game. It's cheaper than all get out, right? And it's not like some geeky thing. You, and you don't have to be super smart to play it. Anybody can do it. And just like in any other sport, there's human stories. And here's the other thing about it that's amazing. When I was a young kid, I imagined like, oh, someday, you know, they're going to come up with some video game that, of course, is going to be better than chess. That's just my childlike intuition, right? Because games have like sounds, you know, they got all kinds of flashing bling bling and yada yada. But it hasn't happened, right? There's no game that is stuck in the popular imagination with all these fancy games that just has a Fortnite. People aren't even talking about that anymore, right? So there's little memes that come and go with games, but none of those games have any kind of depth. And they don't have like a, a thing where you get like a ranking system that's fundamentally meaningful, right? Like you can't, with chess, you're like, oh, I'm 800, now I can go to 850, right on, I'll post that on Twitter, and then boom, I've accomplished something, right? That's mm -hmm. another thing we gotta talk about with Twitter. Like people are, uh, uh, you know, posting about their small gains. And honestly, for me as a fan, it's more interesting than Carlson because Carlson has killed the world championship anyway. So I'm more interested in the smaller stories like will Chess Von Doom make it out of 1000, you know? Will it happen? I don't know. What a storyline. Mm -hmm. Which I know you said Sorry, I know you said Chess Von Doom, but Chess Von Doom is another great <laughs> another great username. Oh, Absolutely. I heard Chess Fondue. Fun, like, fun like Doom. Like Fun Doom, yeah. <laughs> but Fun Doom might also be pretty good. But that's actually an example of a kind of a, a dude who's taking it up and is influencing the game in a kind of social way that there's a lot of people doing that. Um, mm -hmm. And it does, it go, speaks to my point. It becomes, it's not no longer a geeky game. It's not an elitist game. It's not something you need some big down payment just to be into, right? Boom, you're in. You can start right away. And like, to your point, David, like people are seeing it in their friends. And um, I also was doing some research and there was a lot of guys who were like, yeah, you know, started with the Neiman thing. And then I was, it started feeding me. The algorithm started feeding me. Uh, exactly. Uh, Levy videos. And then, you know, it's I was the like, algorithm, right? Well, definitely it's part of it. But, you yeah. know, there, but the algorithm exists for everything, right? If you were yeah, in the Fortnite, like it would feed you Fortnite videos, right? Right, but I feel like Jesse, like if you searched for funny cat videos on YouTube now, it might like offer you up a Levy video, no, a Gotham no, Chess it video. Will, you it know? will feed like you funny cat videos. I have been there. I have sure? done this with my children. <laughs> we want to watch funny cat well, videos. We can find them. But maybe it'll be like, oh, it'll be like, you know, um, Gotham Chess loses to Mittens or something like that. Or, or uh -huh. I don't know. Yeah, I was going to say it, it might make that connection. But um, connection. I think if you search for something unrelated, then I don't think it would necessarily force feed Chess right. on you. No, it's not. Yeah, it's not force um, feeding. It's but, but sometimes it does. Like I notice when I'm on my YouTube suggested, it'll recommend me a video that is kind of clearly, um, it's like, the number one video of that genre. And because I'm into chess or I'm into other board games or whatever, it's like recommending me this. Like recently I got recommended this video of like some finals of like a Tetris world championship. And yeah. it was like the most like dramatic Tetris final that they've ever had. And I've never searched for Tetris ever right. in my life on anything, on any platform. <laughs> but for some reason, this video was suggested to me. And I feel like for chess, I imagine that happens to other people as well. There's some super viral video and then it gets suggested to a bunch of people yeah. um, just because just because it's is going viral. And then YouTube's like, well, okay, this person's into some other video games. You know, maybe they're into chess as well. So that's that's totally uh, totally. Yeah, possible. I think it's getting like I think they've realized like it hit a point and the and the I think now and then a chess thing is being suggested to somebody who's not searching for chess. That's what I'm trying to say. Like, I think it's hit like a point where the algorithm thinks that it's valuable to try and like throw in some of these chess videos for other people. So folks, if you want to like help the boom, basically you gotta, you have to start taking advantage of the fact that they're always listening, right? So just start, start like inserting chess into your conversations, start mentioning no. it, people's phones will pick it up. Hang on, <laughs> we haven't agreed if we want chess to boom, Kostya. Oh, so not been agreed upon. yeah, different, different question, I guess. Yeah. 
Another, which we can turn to next if you want. But Another interesting thing about it that makes it more approachable, I think, is when I was a kid, uh, one of the things that actually really drove my interest in it was, this is pre-computer, of course, right? And uh, without the computer, there was a kind of priesthood about chess players, like, you know, the whole dream of making, let's say, the master title or the various, you know, C, B, A classes, and then classes, maybe yeah. I am and GM, that whole thing in the distance. And for those of us in it, it was a very, it's a very compelling story to like reach the top. And then there's a kind of, there was a kind of mystique about the players at the top. And then we would talk about, you know, the world champions in this kind of odd tones as if we were like the mini priests and they were the high priests. Um, and I think that was prop made it made chess a lot less approachable. But now where the computer is saying we're all fools, <laughs> we're all, the computer is saying we're all fools and this stream of YouTube videos and shorts is confirming that, then it becomes an equalizer where it doesn't feel like there's people above you who have some kind of authority over you. And the chess punks hashtag kind of speaks to that as well. It's like, my sense of the chess punks was like, well, we don't need some authority of, of cry telling us something or some GM telling us something. We're just doing it on our own. And we're like revolting against that hierarchical structure. Um, and I think that was a hidden thing that was keeping the huge masses of people from coming into the game. Yeah. The other thing, um, and you guys, you guys might hate this, but a comparison that people often made, um, or was they would say that the reason that like, uh, uh, poker had this like TV boom where mm -hmm. they could, um, they would put a lot of poker on television and chess didn't was mm -hmm. that because in poker you can see, the whole cards and that lets the audience understand the game a little bit better because they kind oh of God. Yeah. see what's what's going down um <laughs> and now already <laughs> knows where i'm going with this um chess has become a lot more accessible to watch because of the eval bar now everyone logs in they see the eval bar they can see who's winning they can finally understand like who's ahead even if um they literally don't know how to play they can read the eval bar and they feel like they're into the game. They're like, all right, I like this guy. I don't like that guy. I'm happy when he wins. I'm happy when that guy loses. It's like, you can get into it. So, okay. Um, okay. No, I hear not, you. Maybe not the best thing for, yeah, chess improvers, but um, for people to watch that normally wouldn't watch chess, absolute game changer. So one thing, I just want to draw that out because it's an interesting comparison. So back in the day, right? So the poker, Texas Hold'em thing had a whole boom. They had a boom like 2004. That's really when it took off. A lot of chess players ended up doing it. And right, so you imagine like a TV shot and you get to see the cards, but the noobs don't really understand the stats. And what I remember from a couple of those shows was the, the, they would show you the statistical chance of winning, right, yeah. with each hand. And then a card would get turned over and then boom, the stats would change. So instantly mm -hmm. the viewers would have a mild sense of what's going on from looking at the cards, but then this definitive sense from looking at the stats. Absolutely. Yeah. And then it's like one player could be um, winning if they just call, but like they don't know and they're thinking about it. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. like, ah, <laughs> just go. But, but the other the other really big piece there, Kostya, I mean, I think you have a good point, as you said, much as I may not like it. Um, but the other part there is seeing the drama on the faces of those players, right? Um, and, and I'm looking at, there's all these like, you know, stupid clickbait titles here on the right in my YouTube. Right. And for example, it says Magnus shows no mercy, humiliating Alexandra Botez. I mean, first of all, why would a world champion and a nobody play each other? Right. Like, like, uh, like what is even a game between them? But if we forget that what you see is it's like shows no mercy, humiliating. These are like yeah. interpersonal, like, like words that get your blood up. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so here's, I want to tell you something. I, at some point, had to make a pilgrimage to wake on Zay. I was probably 26, 27. Um, pilgrimage to wake on Zay to see Kramnik and Topolov play a game with each other. Live. 
I'd never, I'd never seen those players' faces, right? Like I'd seen their game, their moves in Chess Life magazine or in books, right? I'd never seen them. When I was in high school, one of my friends flew to Las Vegas when there was a World Cup knockout. Maybe they called it the World Championship that year. I don't know, right? So what's now the Grand Prix or the World Cup? And they went there and so they could like, you know, ask Nigel Short for his signature and they could see like a couple top players for the first time in their life, right? Like for me, I went all the way to Wake on Zay to see those players' faces and it was incredible. What an experience. Now you're sitting at home and they've got webcams on them, right? So when we're watching Gukesh and uh, and and um, Aragaisi play this like 10 minute game, what a clash. If you're watching on the chess.com broadcast, you can see the webcams of these guys, right? That's the second piece, Kostya, right? Which they've also now got that's making these shows so gripping. Um, that's fair. Yeah, I've, I've always loved seeing like the video feeds of like world championship matches and like seeing the body language of the players. It really helps you, yeah, get into it and really. And now, yeah, with the webcams, it's it's almost even better because you're, you know, the webcam is on the players, but they're still alone in their own room. So they might be more willing even to show emotion than they would um, in a room full of people. So, it's like, so you get the, the best of, of all worlds. Yeah. yeah. So, um, yeah, you guys were saying you, you don't think this is necessarily a good thing for chess. I mean, it's always going to come with, with drawbacks, but it feels like, um, in general, more people that are involved, especially like we need kids that are into the game. Kids are very important mm -hmm. in their interest. Yeah. Without kids, there's really no no future. And, oh, Absolutely. Let's, let's briefly talk talk kids. I don't know what the numbers are, but I can tell you from the experience of my daughter and the kids around that chesskid.com is also booming. I mean, it's nice. extreme. It's extreme with the with the chess kid site and uh, Mike Klein over there. Like they idolize Mike Klein. I had Mike Klein send my daughter a uh, phone message. Those like over the moon. It's like the guy. <laughs> the guy is calling me on the phone. Oh, man, huge. So that's also happening. And honestly, that was happening uh, before, too. And that, that was also really interesting. But that's a like a the kid boom has been happening for a, like I would say the last couple of years, especially where at least I've noticed it, especially anecdotally, like just around me. Um, that's a whole other thing because they're not, they're not, they're not, that's not some Neiman thing. By the way, I, I, I have real hesitancy with the Neiman story and I have some hesitancy with the YT Algo story. So I'm not convinced by, the only part of it I'm convinced of is that it's been made more accessible by all of these different uh, content creators, us included. Though we're not as you know, we're not as fancy as some of them, but still, right? Like all of this content that's out there, I do feel it's making it more accessible than it used to be. But so many of the people I'm talking to, they're just logging on and they're and they're going for it, you know. Um, yeah, no, like you said, um, before before Gotham Chess, there was Fun Master Mike, which a lot of kids knew. Yeah, yeah Fun before Master. they knew the names of like any any world champions. <laughs> of course, yeah, yeah. The other thing I think is got to be said about this is. Uh, part of it has got part of the chess.com numbers, right? Has to be the fact that some that the Europeans were previously playing on either chess 24 or some other site, and now they're playing on chess.com, right? That doesn't account for all of it by any stretch, but that's got to be part of the story. Um, and then obviously, chess.com is the huge winner. <laughs> I mean, it's I mean, as any kind of company to grow like that, <laughs> what is a month? Oh, dude, you know. Yeah. Fun. Well, actually, yeah, you see a similar thing on on YouTube, where, um, for example, like, what for, when you have a YouTube channel and when you have one or two videos that are kind of your best performers, that ends up getting extended if you ever have a video that takes off. So if like if the algorithm decides to start pushing your channel, like you have a successful video. What the algorithm then does, then it takes your best videos and then throws them out to more people. And what that ends up doing is basically gives a ton of views to your 
your top video or your top two videos. And I feel like chess.com is now feeling that it's like, even if they're not necessarily responsible for the boom, if everyone is searching chess in the app store, it's like their app is going to come up first and the number one app is going to be the one that people download. And so their lead is going to extend even more just by virtue of being that number one uh, result. Right, right, right. Does Lee Chess even have an app? Yeah. Yeah, yeah sure. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And they've also had growth, but it's not even close. It's not even close. Um, but they have had growth over the last, the same period. Yeah. So, so, you know, after thinking this through, like, do we have a sort of agreement on what the cause of the chess boom is? Like the reasons that I laughed at, you know, a couple weeks ago seem to be pretty <laughs> serious after all. For sure. The, the shorts thing is very serious. I mean, I don't know if it's all like all Levy, all Gotham chess. I, I think he's had a big part of it, but I mean, there are other creators as well. Like you mentioned chess based India. It's just like insane views and yeah. yeah, there's like multiple, multiple huge channels, but, um, and there's like a chess.com India as well, like division of chess.com, which I'm sure has big numbers. Yeah. Yeah, sure. Um, well, I don't know. I mean, it still feels like it was all sorts of things, but <laughs> <laughs> right. But so that's the thing, right? Like one of the things I laughed at with chess.com was that they gave like 10 reasons. Like I laughed at a mm. lot of the individual reasons, but I was also like 10 reasons. That means you don't know what the real reason is, right? Like, cause, cause for example, with the queen's gambit boom, right. Or the, or the COVID boom or the Fisher boom. Like it was really obvious. It's like, like you say it's because Fisher's playing for the world championship and it's like, okay, <laughs> your no. narrative makes sense to me. I can, I can understand it. But like, when you give me like a 10 thread narrative, like that's, that's confusing. Now I have to do like social science here. Yeah. I want to add another thing actually that I think is very important. And, and I think, I think you, someone used the word bubbling up, maybe it's you, David, but th this bubbling up thing, this next thing I think is really important. So when I was a kid, one of the problems that chess had was, uh, it was like either you perceived, definitely perceived as a Russian game, but then like, if not that, then a European game. And when I was a kid, it was like, especially it was Eastern uh, European Jews who were dominating it. But essentially yeah. people who in America so, would be identified as white people, right? But now, especially with the rise of India and China in the chess world, it's obviously, to anyone watching any of these streamers, it's obviously a worldwide game now in a way that it just wasn't previously, right? And so, yes, we've had like, and, and this has been going on for a while, like India and China have been chess superpowers for a long time, right? But especially I think if you see it on a stream or wherever you see it, right, it's gonna make it feel much more accessible to the people previously who might've been like, well, that's not me. Right. And that goes to this thing I mentioned before about it previously being seen as elitist and intellectual and yada, yada. Right. It, it loses so much of that baggage. So for me, I think that we have a, some disagreement because I really feel it's like what was holding chess back, like chess had this prowess all the time, but there was certain baggage on it that got is getting tossed off in this chess boom. People are seeing chess in a new light and that's what's you know, driving the growth to my mind. Hmm. Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah, because you, you do have all these like um, athletes now as well, like playing the game, like basketball players, football players. Right. You would not have seen that five years ago, like them playing on their phone or like something. Like that. <laughs> that would have so, just, so just basically, been wild. So basically chess.com has Stockfish and one month they put like, uh, you know, Bill Gates' face on, on Stockfish. Uh -huh. And then the next month they put Mitten's face on it, like a cat cartoon. And the next month they put some basketball player who I hadn't heard of. Um, they put his face on it and they said, this is, you know, they had some announcement. This is the most exciting thing we've ever done in our lives. You know, we're changing the picture. We're changing the icon on Stockfish to a drawing of some basketball player. And next month, maybe it'll be messy. And then it'll be like, uh, you know, an upside down dog. And that's going to like add a million, sorry, 5 million, you know, new, new people. And then, you know, Hikaru and, and, uh, and, uh, Gotham are going to spend a couple hours and figure out like a really good, um, 
clickbait title that you could put on a game that they play against the upside down dog or the basketball player or whatever, and that's going to add another $5 million. It's crazy, but but I, I guess I'm kind of convinced that that is how it works now. Yeah, um, that, was, that was kind of funny. There was, there was a lot of hate towards those bots. Honestly, I don't, I don't fully get it. It's like, all right, just let people enjoy middens or like enjoy their celebrity bots. I mean, it's just like a fun, a fun thing. And it, people just got like so mad about it. It was wild. People were so upset about the popularity of minutes. I didn't really get it. Obviously I wasn't, yeah, I didn't care about minutes at all. Uh, <laughs> so was it, you know, it didn't appeal to me. I don't think it was designed for me. It was fine. I had no issue just kind of ignoring it. I might've tweeted about minutes once. I don't remember. It didn't matter to me. I was just like, all right, whatever. It's a fad. I, I, I thought it will probably, you know, blow over or people will move on to different bots. But mm -hmm. um, yeah, I don't get all the people that are, you know, like it ruined their week. <laughs> like, like just let people have their fun you know how did like, it ruin whatever. somebody's week what's that how did it how how would that ruin somebody's week well there's all these people that are just like so upset over minutes and like writing essays about how this is you know the, the moral degradation of the chess world that people are into this like oh. cat robot it's like whatever just let people enjoy their their toy like it doesn't like what does it matter you know you still have studying to do go read 100 end games you must know like what, what why are you wasting your time like worrying about Minutes is popular, like, right? Yeah, I don't know. Sure, I see. I see what you mean, but I mean that is a little bit what we're doing here on our our talk show is we're talking about this sort of thing that I mean I I think I'll go back to ignoring it again next week. You know, it's just like a moment of realizing that this is you know the chess world and. Uh, Oh, no, I mean, nothing wrong with talking about minutes. I just mean, like, I, I saw a lot of people that are just like, and even our chat as well, they're just like viscerally upset at any mention of like minutes. And it's like, mm -hmm. relax. Like, what's, what's the. What's, yeah. Yeah. Well, I think I can identify with, with that, with that, with that segment of the population, actually, myself, Ghost. Yeah. Right. Right. Because I think, like, I think it's just. I think things that are too stupid just shouldn't be done or talked about. And if that's how you generate more people playing chess, it's like, you shouldn't even do it. It's just too dumb. Like all you should do is put out good content. Hey, you know what game I loved growing up? Chess Master. Uh -huh. And that basically had an icon no different to minutes. <laughs> but, but I loved facing Chess Master. I love facing the different levels. There are different characters. For all I know, it's just all the same engine. It was just all Fritz or whatever, but yeah, yeah, yeah. That was fun as a kid, you know. Yeah, look, here's an idea. Um, here's an idea from our Dborn that would surely make them another million users. Make their next bot be Hans Niemann, mm -hmm. right? He can sue them again. You know, stop using my <laughs> my face, and they'll be like, "Oh, okay, we'll defend this in court and get another million users." Hey, careful what you wish for. Um, Hey, I, maybe we, I'm gonna try to get Chess Master. That would be some great content. Maybe we'll really try to boot up Chess Master. See, see if that holds up. <laughs> Let me just say one thing obvious as we you know wrap this thing up. A couple months ago, when uh, Chess.com bought Chess Twenty Four Play Magnus, it was really up in the air at that time, and we did our talk about it about whether this would be a good thing for chess.com. It seemed like a bad decision. They, it seemed like they overpaid for it. And now, <laughs> now it's like, oh man, that was a hell of a business decision, right? Well, I, I don't mean, know if it was a hell of a business decision. It's just like, okay, the only potential downside with it was really that they overpaid, right? Uh -huh. Like they were always gonna get Magnus um, to play in their events, Magnus's name, um, Chessable, like they were gonna get stuff that has value. Like the only downside was, are they overpaying? Mm -hmm. And I don't think it would violate any rules for me to tell you like that they can afford it. So it's, it's kind of like a situation where, you know, if Coca-Cola buys some kind of company, like nothing can go wrong for Coca-Cola. They already won, right? Like they will make $10 billion a year forever. Like nothing can ever stop that, right? Mm. And chess.com is a little bit in that kind of a position. It's like, and that's one of the reasons why big companies, you'll see them defending their position by buying lots of small 
companies in general at rates that may seem silly. And sometimes, you know, people will be like, oh, Facebook, like they wasted a hundred million dollars buying some little company that that never panned out, right? Or um, or I'll put it this way. Like, Amazon like, bought some little company that makes uh, electrical vehicles, for example, right? And you're like, why did they spend, you know, $200 million on a company that produced 10 vehicles last year? But the, the point is, they've got $100 billion. It doesn't matter if they lost that $100 million. They're defending their position by just buying anything. And they can't ever really lose. Because anytime they have a problem, they'll just raise prices on all of you and squeeze and squeeze <laughs> money they need back out of the populace. Okay. I don't know. but Well, let me put it this way then. Let me just do an alternate history thing. So Play Magnus was buying up everything. They were buying everything. And it was very yeah. ambitious. And uh, it, at the time they were doing it and they were making chessable, you know, employing a gazillion people. So... Imagine though, what happened was they just didn't have the growth that they needed to sustain that kind of investment. And then the investors were basically, dude, I'm out. And that's how well, that criti collapsed. Critical difference is they were spending money they didn't have, right? Oh, okay, okay, but a lot so, of companies do that. Like, it's a scope thing, right? Like if Chess.com didn't have enough money to buy Play Magnus, yeah. that's where it could have been a problem, right? Okay, but let, let me just finish this thought though. So imagine this happened the beginning this this current chess boom happened at the beginning of last year well then play magnus makes it for sure then they would have legitimized that investment that they have made then it would no. have all been great no because they were all like they they had the covid boom they had the queen's gambit boom they lost money every single quarter jesse it's just they were run they were just running their company in a way which i would characterize as bad okay you know, like they were always losing money no matter what was happening. Chess.com was always making money, you know, 10 years before the boom. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. They were making money with very little resources. And Play Magnus had tons of resources, but they were always just burning more money than they actually had. Okay. All right. Yeah. I have some disagreement, but I understand where you're coming from. Yeah, I mean, it's a simplified version, right? But they were losing money every single quarter. They were always spending more money than they had. Chess.com always, it never spent money that they didn't yet have. But what I saw happening, okay, just I'm getting a little bit off topic, but what I mm -hmm. saw happening was they were investing all that money, Play Magnus was, to take a shot at the crown. <laughs> they were trying to take chess.com sure. out. Oh, yeah. I mean, oh, it yeah. wasn't like they were just being fools and chumps about it. No, they were investing big yeah. to, you know, take a shot at the title. Right. For sure. And if they had been, it somehow it made There's it, some then world maybe... where it could have paid off. Yeah. But but it would have had to be like they would have had to execute in a different way at some point. It's not like just a boom would have let them beat chess.com because chess.com would have ridden the boom as well. Right. And was consistently outperforming them. Anyways, the match is over. <laughs> so come as one. <laughs> <laughs> Hands have been shaken. Hands have been shaken. Hands have been shaken. GG. <laughs> yeah. GG has been called. <laughs> yeah. Okay. See there, you guys want like a viral video? We can dress up as uh as uh as uh, Magnus and, and Danny Wrench, Jesse, yeah. you and I. Yeah. And and you know, we can shake hands and then coast you in the back and go, that'll be a GG. <laughs> <laughs> We're a couple a couple months late on that, but I bet it yeah. still work. Stop.